Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Absu Habibi, and today we're going to be doing another religion video, kind of like my Orthodox uh, faith video, uh, which you can see um, up here. Um, but instead, we're going to talk about the Shinto faith and why I think it is the second best faith in EU4 multiplayer. Also, before I begin the video, I just wanted to hope uh, all of you guys had a good holiday season and you're all taking care of yourselves um and i really want to give back to you guys so for the next couple of videos i will be giving away a dlc of your choice per video so this video um 24 hours from me posting this video i'm gonna pick a comment and i'm gonna give them any dlc they choose um and we're gonna do that with every single uh the next three videos that i post so um stick to the end and I'll tell you guys how you can win a free DLC. So why is the Shinto faith so powerful? Why do people like me consider it like the second best nation in MP or uh, even players like Zlevik in his video where he talked about religions in U4, he ranked it as a uh, second, I believe. Um, and uh, why, what makes it so powerful? So, the main three reasons why Shinto is good is um, the base bonuses of it, so like morale of armies, as well as a special government type reform that you can get only from being Shinto. That's the first reason. Second is isolationism and how adaptable it is. And third is Shinto events. Uh, which is um, very it's kind of unique to Shinto Hindu Hindu faith has some very interesting events as well um, all faiths have events but um, the Shinto f events specifically have some major bonuses and buffs and different events that give us some pretty nice modifiers so first base what does the faith give you you have morale of armies and then you have your isolationism which basically uh, depending on what level of isolationism uh, you are on you get a different bonus we'll go more into that later and the morale of armies specifically in multiplayer is a very very strong bonus to stack and I'll give you guys example in this campaign right here um, and we are actually um, part of my uh, part of this campaign is I tried to stay under governing capacity specifically so I can stay everything and then I decrease the autonomy as much as possible in all of my provinces. And the reason why we did this is so we can go through our reform tree ASAP um, and it also helps our economy, obviously. Um, so uh, as you can see here, we in uh, 1605, we will uh, get to the next reform and what we're going to do here is we're going to actually in this case we're going to take install theocratic government um, and then we are going to take clerical state and then we're going to take manpower recovery speed then we're going to take morale of armies another 10 percent to stack with our, um, our 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 faith and then we're going to take integration of the Sohai, which gives plus 5 combat ability, plus 5 discipline, plus 10 mercenary manpower. Um, that's another stacked discipline that's with our ideas as well. Then when we finish this quality ideas, which we're, we're close to, we're like maybe 5 years down the line, um, we get this, which is another 5 discipline. Then we also get discipline from here. Then uh, when we finish our religious ideas, which is going to be our next group. This one's going to take a little bit longer than quality to take. Um, we are going to then take these two uh, policies. Both one gives five morale of armies, one gives 10 morale of armies. And now it's 1588 and we have almost seven morale. We almost have seven morale. And um, that's absolutely bonkers. Compare that to, um, you know, uh, let's say tag room. Um, you know, they're working with 6.02, which is still very high. Um, Spain, tag Spain. Let's see what they have. 6.44. So it's definitely competing with the Europeans um, who have the these in their ideas. 
um, the morale of armies. And this guy even has ex defensive ideas. And it's also in his tradition because he's Spain. All right, so you get it. Okay, you can stack a bunch of different military modifiers if you could become a theocratic government. Right. Next is isolationism. We're now going to go more in depth in it. So isolationism is there's a f uh, five levels. And of course, you do need a DLC for this. Um, I think it is Mandate of Heaven that gives this DLC. I'm sorry, my my knowledge of the DLC is kind of vague because my first ex one, one of my first experience after not playing the game for two years was with all the DLCs. So um, yeah, <laughs> but anyways, uh, the the adaptability is based off of Shinto events, and you can go to the wiki page and get more details on here. But I'm going to share some of the events here. Um, in a bit, I'm going. To, we're going to look at the wiki page together. But depending on where you go in these events, usually there'll be two to three options. One option is that you go towards uh, isolationist. One option is you go towards open doors, and then one is in the middle. Um, sometimes you'll have the in the middle one. Um, and basically, what I like to do, specifically in multiplayer lobbies, is I like to stay on adaptive, the level that you start in, because it gives minus 10 dev cost, which is very considerable, and plus 10 institution spread, which is very useful, especially if you're not in Europe. And the way that you stay, the way that you stay on the, that um, adaptive path even when there's just two options is that you have to just basically through the events there will be multiple events through the event chain with each of these different um, incidents and um, through those you basically will take one isolationist one adaptive one isolationist one adaptive one isolationist etc etc and you'll go straight down the middle um, and now we will take a look at the events specifically so here we have um, the wiki page for the Shinto events and I can't really show you guys all the different um, incidents that you get as Shinto um, and <laughs> but I will be showing you this one Nanban trade which uh, the mean time for this to trigger in order for it to trigger you have to be of Shinto faith and you need to have discovered European traders so you just need to ha be able to see a capital of a European nation uh, Portugal Netherlands Spain France it doesn't matter but once you're able to do that, there is about a 50 year mean time where this will trigger. And as you can see, you have one, two, three, four events. Um, and there, here's, it's usually the pattern is about three to four events per incident where you choose between different uh, choices from lowest isolationist to most isolationist and giving different bonuses. If we look right here, um, uh, this uh, we have three options in the Nanban trade um, incident. The first um, in this first event gives 10 local goods or 30 goods produced, or you can get uh, ducats worth half a year's of incomes. And this one gives domestic trade power plus five. And so either way, which you go, none of these really um, f options matter. You can just pick whatever you like, but you need to balance them out down the line. So like, for example, if you want to stay keeping going and towards neutral, you would uh, want to go to the, the money option. The mo easiest way to do this would be money option minus prestige, but one production. Um, the this one right here the institution spread or prestige that option doesn't really that matter that much and then here you want to go to uh, goods produce modifier and then boom you will be um, you will come out of it at the same level and you will have a bunch of nice modifiers and a free base production and some ducats that you can use to build manufacturers and that is just one of the many incidents one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten incidents that you get as being the Shinto faith. And one of them even gives uh, manpower for like 50, uh, uh, gives like 20 or 15% manpower for 50 years, which is actually a pretty big bonus. So even though you don't get a sane, insane manpower bonuses like um, Muscovy, Muscovy, for example, or Russia, um, you or just Orthodox faith in general, um, you still can get some nice little bonuses that will help you out throughout your campaign. Of course, you don't have to stay adaptive. And actually, as the game progresses, maybe you want to switch to 
con uh, selective integration for more uh, construction costs so you can build like spam manufacturers and soldiers households uh, maybe you want to go towards tech cost uh, so open doors maybe even if you're doing like a single player campaign going towards isolationism or going towards closed door during uh, world conquest could be pretty useful so um, it all has its own use cases um, however switching between the different isolationist levels is not as easy as like the as the russian faith um i mean sorry the orthodox faith where it's just um switching between different icons for the cost of patriarch authority all right so now that we've talked about the shinto faith here are the rules for the eu4 dlc uh giveaway and this is per video by the way so it's not like for all the videos so um here are the rules you have to subscribe to this uh to my channel um, you need to comment below so write whatever you want it doesn't have to be anything related to the DLC it could just be something just about the video and you need to like the video um, and then 24 hours I'll use a random number generator to decide a, r a random person um, uh, in the chat and I will res re reply to their message saying hey you won it is your discord and then I'll wait for the response get their discord and give them the DLC uh, key in their DMs. So that's what you got to do. That's it for this video, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. Later.